Welcome, Professor Programmer. Hi. Hey, how can I help you, Professor? How are you? I'm very well. Thanks for asking, Professor. Search for Python programming. Here is what I found for Python programming on Google. Play Flask Bank Programming. Summarize Python Programming. Python is a high-level, interpreted, general-purpose programming language. Its design philosophy emphasizes code readability with the use of significant indentation. Python is dynamically typed and garbage collected. It supports multiple programming paradigms, including structured, particularly procedural, object-oriented, and functional programming. It is often described as a batteries included language due to its comprehensive standard library. Guido Van Rossum began working on Python in the late 1980s as a successor to the ABC programming language and first released it in 1991 as Python 0.9.0. Python 2.0 was released in 2000 and introduced new features such as list comprehensions, cycle detecting garbage collection, reference counting, and Unicode support. Exit. Going offline. Welcome back students, this is the Professor Programmer here and in today's video I'm going to teach you guys how to create your very own personal voice assistant. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So here I created a Python program, so we're technically going to use Python and Arduino and we're going to cross platform them together to achieve this software and hardware combination. So as you can see, I've imported a few libraries. So I've imported the speech recognition, Google text to speech web browser, time, serial, and Wikipedia. I need to do that. Anyways, so I first started with connecting my actual Arduino to the program. So I use a try and accept block over here to handle any other exceptions. And I first created a port object. So I've used the serial module and I've connected my port, which my Arduino is connected to. So this value over here basically changes depending on what port your Arduino is connected to. And I'm going to teach you guys how to do that in a bit. And then I've added a few print statements over here just to make it sure that my actual Arduino is connected. Here I've initialized a few variables. This basically gives the robot a voice. And you could change your voice depending on the value over here. So this could be one, two, zero, whatever. It just play around with it and see what you like the most. Now, if you scroll here, I first initialize a recognizer and this function over here basically listens for our audio. So whatever we say, and it converts it to a text so that our program can understand what we're saying. So here it waits for an input from the microphone audio variable over here listens to it via source, as you can see over here. Um, and we create a voice data as an empty string. So whatever we say will replace the value in voice data. So over here, I've used a try and accept block again, uh, waits for our audio, and I've used this um, recognizer over here to connect our audio to text. And this exception basically handles whatever other exceptions there are that our program cannot compute. And this function over here returns our voice data in lowercase. We also have a speak function over here, which basically makes an audio file for our program to output to the user. And this voice data object over here that we created from this function will be transmitted to the other functions over here so that our program can interpret it. So if you look over here, we have the respond function. Now this basically handles the different kinds of response our program is going to output depending on our input. Now, we can see that the voice data object is a parameter of our function. Now, if um, the word hey, hi, or hello is in the object voice data, then this block of code will basically be executed. And as you can see, we've got the port.write function over here. So what this does, it basically transfers the bit P or whatever value there is into our Arduino program, which basically uses an if or else statement to carry out different procedures. 
and I'll go more in depth later on in this video just to show that how the bits are transmitted and how it's interpreted by the program. Now um, you can see that there are greetings over here depending on what it says. And here, um, if you want to do a Google search from a voice assistant, it basically scans through our text, which is in the voice data, and searches for the keywords search for. Now, if the keyword search for exists in our voice data, then these bits will be transmitted to the Arduino program. The search term will split the search for out of the text, and we're going to create a URL. Now this URL basically searches for our item and it just replaces whatever we said into the search bar over here so it can access the website immediately. Now we use the web browser function over here to actually open the URL and if it all works right then our program will open our web browser and search for the things that we're looking for. So now over here we've got the search YouTube if block over here and if play exists in our keyword or voice data then it will carry out um, this procedure over here and I'll replace search term with whatever we want to say so if I say um, play Arduino programming then it basically remove the word play and this search term will be replaced by Arduino programming so it'll actually run the URL on the web browser now uh, we created this Wikipedia summary so it basically summarizes any topic that you were searching for so if you say oh um Jarvis summarize programming and it just give us a quick summary on what programming is about. Now I'll create a slight mistake over here. Um, instead of creating another if block, you could basically add a comma and type in summarize. Now I've done this because the program actually struggles to differentiate summarize and summarize. I mean they're basically the same thing, but sometimes it like um, confuses Z and S. So I basically involved both of them so our program can run either way now scroll down over here we've got a basic shutdown of the program so if you say goodbye exit or quit then our program goes offline and that ends the program now i imported the time uh, module on top and this is because i actually want the program to go on repeat and wait for any input that the user provides because i don't want to basically restart the program every time I want to say something I want to let the program run by itself so that's basically it for the Python program and I'm going to show you guys what I've done to the Arduino program all right guys let's take a look at the Arduino program so here I've initialized the servo motors so I created one for the head left hand and right hand and over here I basically set it up the servo motors so I've created the initial values so that the positions of the servo motors are defined at the beginning. So here I've created different functions so that our Arduino can actually carry out these different servo motor movements depending on the bit that's transmitted by a Python program. Now, if you remember in our Python program, I've written a code which says port.write b open quotations mark and inside the quotation mark, um, I've included different letters. Now, the reason I did that is because in the void loop away, which is the main piece of code that runs repeatedly, um, it basically detects any bits that are transmitted by our Python program. And if you can see, uh, the bit P over here basically does a double punch. Now, this basically moves both of our right and left hand motors so that it looks like our robot is moving its hands and doing a double punch, basically saying what it does. And I created different movements depending on the bits that are transmitted by our Python program. This basically allows our Python program to communicate with our Arduino program, which basically uses different programming languages and it allows for our cross platform communication. Now, this bit of code is basically complicated to explain, but as always, the code is in the description below in my GitHub repo and you guys are free to copy and paste it and ma basically make the code your own and you can tweak the code to make it work according to your favor. And now I'll show you how to actually connect your um, Arduino to the Python program. So if you head over to tools over here and if you drop down to port, you can see that it is COM3, COM4. Now, if you actually connect your Arduino, there'll be more ports available. And basically, whatever port you connect it to, you need to specify on your Python program, if you remember earlier. 
and once you've copy and pasted this code you just need to upload it to the arduino once it's connected and yeah your code should be working fine and if there are any difficulties please um mention it down below in the comments and i'll try my best to explain it to you and help you solve your problem all right now let's look at the physical hardware of the robot and how it's going to look like so i apologize because one of the arms is missing but i think we could go to the tutorial without the arm um anyways so this robot is made out of completely out of cardboard as you can see it's pretty simple i've added some black tape just to hide out some defects of the cardboard and it also looks much cooler and i've added like a face a custom face at the top just to give the robot a bit more personality um, than the regular voice assistant so if i take this off you could see that i've attached three different servo motors over here so this one controls the left arm or oh, sorry the right arm of the robot the center one controls the head so you can look at the user and the laptop and this over here controls the left arm of the robot now let's take a look at the inside of the robot so if i pull out my arduino outside you can see that i've attached um a shield on top so i could extend the servo motor so i could attach like more servo motors if i wanted to now the code for this will be in the description i'm just showing you how it all connects so it can make it easier for you guys to connect your arduino as well so once i attached the shield i made sure that all the ground pins on the servo motor are connected to the shield where it says ground away so if i pull this up you might be able to see that this area over here says ground and this is where you attach all the servo motors ground to and over here is the five volts this is where you attach the power for the servo zoom in here you go the five volts over here and over here you can see the different pins that the program is connected to so all these different pins allow the servo motor to move based on the inputs provided by the python program so i'll just give you guys a cool look at the robot so this is basically everything uh, in terms of connectivity for the robot and I've attached a little slit or made a little slit at the bottom of the robot so that once I put this all in I could open this up and connect the USB port to the Arduino I put it all back in and yeah that's basically everything there is for the robot and yeah that's basically it for this video if you liked it don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below what you think of it and what videos you want next and I'll see you guys in the next video.